Hey friends, Jill here with Sean and Melanie. Welcome back to Whispering Willow Farm. Today we are in the tunnel and we've got a pretty big project to do today. Mm -hmm. Primarily, you have a really big project yeah. to, do, to do today. <laughs> we are actually gonna be harvesting all of the ginger and then Melanie is going to be processing that to be used uh, in the elderberry syrup that she makes. And so we're gonna walk through that entire process with you guys. Many of you have asked us questions, sent in emails, and so this is just gonna be information overload and kinda of tell you guys everything about the ginger. Sean's gonna start and just talk about how we grew it and what that looked like. Yeah, information overload is my only speed. Yes, that is very <laughs> accurate. <laughs> Sorry, brace yourselves. Um, yeah, so we, was that, well, we'll, we'll make a, a link to the video. Yeah. Um, so you can see oh, how- Oh yeah, when how, we planted. Yeah, we planted. We weren't even, we didn't even live on the farm yet. We had come when Jess and Maya still lived here mm -hmm. and planted the ginger. So it was yeah. back in the early summer. Yeah, she had harvested some stuff out yeah. and had some space. So we threw the ginger in here. Mm -hmm. um, I think it was either late May or beginning of June. Yeah. So this has been in here for a while. Um, and this is what it all started off with. This is a hand of, of ginger. So watch that video about how we got started. So that little piece right there made all this ginger. And I cannot wait to weigh it because this is some of the biggest ginger that I've ever grown. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, so you can kind of see how it grows vertically, just like your hand. And it's like each where a finger would be goes up and makes each of these shoots. So it just keeps multiplying and sprouting and sprouting under underground. So as far as growing uh, ginger's pretty easy if you get the conditions set up right first. It's so like we had said like, we didn't really do a lot once it was growing. Yeah, um, there's hardly a, anything. Yeah, really. har hardly anything yeah. at all. There's a little bit of caterpillar damage on some of the leaves, but it's really not not bad. We didn't mm -hmm. have to spray anything. Um, but it's setting up those initial conditions that are hard because ginger is super contradictory to itself. It wants to be really well watered, but it needs really well drained soil. Mm. So this like sandy soil that's in the yep. bed is perfect for it. And it wants it really, really hot, but it wants a, a shade. So wow, yeah. a tunnel with shade cloth <laughs> on it is, is ideal. Yeah. Um, so it wants it hot, but not direct sun. And it wants uh, a lot of water, but not wet. Mm. But so you can grow it in a raised bed. You can grow it, in, it does really well in a raised bed. Can you grow it in containers? Cause I did an experiment with yeah. that, trying yeah. to grow it in containers. I don't know if you guys remember that or not. Yeah, you you obviously won't yield as much. Yeah, it yeah. will be limited. I mean, it's a, it's a heavy feeder. I mean, this is a big plant that produces a lot of root mass. Um, what we have here, just broke one off. Um, so like this hand, goodness, um, is baby ginger. So it's gonna be really, really uh, light. I mean, you could just bite right into this. It's not mm -hmm. like this woody, mm. tough ginger you get at the store. Mm -hmm. And so that's like why we started growing our own ginger is one, we wanted to make sure we were using an organic product so like right. we weren't spraying anything. Mm -hmm. uh, and then two, that it would be, it wouldn't have the bitterness that I think some of the, the mm -hmm. woody that was something you, you'd pointed yeah, out. Yeah, like when we first started off, I was peeling all of this, which was such a, a time yeah. suck. So yeah. yeah, with this, with the skin being so thin, I don't even have to peel it, just scrub it really well. Yeah, mm. yeah that's awesome. Yeah. So, uh, you know, another thing too, with the baby ginger, uh, it's not gonna store like this. This is probably two years old and it's coming from tropical places around the world. This baby ginger, uh, is less than a year old, it's only a few months old, yeah. but it's not gonna store for a, a super long time. So what we do is we freeze it. And so if you're at home, and Mel will get into this later in the video, mm -hmm. uh, you can put it in the freezer, like in a baggie, and then when you need ginger, you just pull it out and you just put it, like, uh, grate it on a cheese grater. Or just chop it. Or, yeah. or chop yeah. it if you just need to throw mm -hmm. it in, into like a, okay. a curry or something like that. So it'll store for a long time, but it'll store in the freezer mm -hmm. through the winter. Which is kind of easy too. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a good thing. And you, you mentioned too, like the grow bags and containers. Yeah. If you are growing it like in a grow bag, you can bring it in through the winter and like have it in a sunny wow. window and then take it back out. That's awesome. And it'll just keep, pull off another hand, plant a new plant. Okay. All right. So can you kind of give maybe a couple practical tips on what type to grow? Like how do they know that when they need to be planting it out? Just so if someone was watching this video, I was like, all right, in a quick few minutes overview, how do I get started? What would you tell them? And then we will reference a video where we planted all this and we did go a bit more in depth on mm -hmm. some of the things. You guys be sure to watch that too, but just kind of an overview, lay it on them. So an overview of ginger, uh, they reproduce through these rhizomes. So it's, it's not really roots. The roots are this <laughs> tangly stuff underneath that connects to the rhizome. Yeah. A rhizome is where plants like store their energy basically. It's something in between the stem and the roots. So a rhizome is kind of like a tuber, a bulb, a corm, 
It's a storage organ for energy for a plant. And so ginger doesn't produce sexually anymore. They've, it's been cultivated, hybridized over thousands of years. Uh, it can produce flowers. I've never seen it grow flowers. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, this ginger is from one individual, yeah, thousands of years ago that people have just been breaking off apart and planting it every year. Wow, that's just really cool. Yeah, it's really yeah, cool. Yeah, that's really neat. So, there are, you, you know, there's not really ginger seeds, uh, just like potatoes. You get, mm -hmm. if you want a certain variety, you have to get that particular uh, plant material. So, what I do, <laughs> this is probably not like the uh, best farmer way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Sean, it. it's the Sean way to do it. Do as I say, not as I do. Um, but because you know, because these are basically all clones of the same plant that's yeah. been around for a thousand years, uh, disease can move really quickly. Mm. So like, I never plant ginger in the same place I planted it before. Okay. I'm always getting, and ideally, you would start with a certified disease-free ginger stock. So that actually happens in a laboratory. They take little tissue samples of the leaves, they make clones, they wow. grow it out in sterile medium to make tubers, and then they ship those tubers all over the world. Hmm. And that's really, really expensive to get that initial seed stock. Uh, I've tried that and there's a waiting list because so many people have gotten into it. It's really popular. Um, and so what I do is I go to Kroger and I get the certified organic ginger from Kroger. It's the same price as the conventional, but it's smaller. Mm -hmm. um, and that's probably just because it was not pumped full of stuff. Uh, and then also I know that the certified organic ginger hasn't been uh, irradiated or anything like mm -hmm. that. Sometimes they'll actually spray either a chemical or irradiate uh, tubers to keep them from sprouting in the grocery store. So be aware of that. Uh, so I get certified organic tubers. I break them off in little pieces and I lay them down on top of some dirt until they start to root. And then that's kind of my pre-sprouting phase. And then they come out into the garden. I mean, it's a pretty big plant. It's yeah. a, it's over four or five feet tall. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know it's in a raised bed, but it's really tall and it's really wide. So we're just doing single rows in a bed. Uh, so like every four feet, you could plant a row. Uh, and we did have to hill them too. Yeah. Uh, hilling them encourages uh, more of these rhizomes, rhizomes to keep growing and also protects them from the sun so they don't get tough. Uh, so you do have to hill it. And then as far as, you know, growing, like I said, they're they're really contradictory. They like the shade, but they like the heat. They like the water, but they like the drainage. Um, so a raised bed, a container is really good for them. And that also allows you, especially like what Jill's doing here in the tunnel, uh, to grow in pretty much any climate in the country. Yeah. Uh, so they grow them in Maine, Vermont, Michigan. Uh, you get these baby gingers in just like four months or so. Yeah, that's um, awesome. And so ours, you know, we're a little bit luckier. We can we live in Arkansas. So I think I started sprouting these in April and I've done them as early as like February and put them in the ground in the tunnel and they just kind of didn't do anything. Mm. They really have to have the heat to take off, kind of, yeah. kind of like, like peppers. And so waiting a little bit longer into the spring, getting them started. Maybe if you are like in Michigan, Maine, you would want to start pretty early and like get them growing uh, before you put them out in the tunnel like midsummer. But for us, we could wait and I don't think the plant would be any smaller if I would have gotten them yeah. in okay. earlier or later. Yeah, good to know. Um, so yeah, so then all we're going to do, you know, the, mm -hmm. the, um, whoa. <laughs> You're so proud. Of I'm so proud. Of it. It's my baby. Yeah. I mean, that, that seriously, I'm I'm it's quite impressive. I'm quite it impressed. Is impressive. Yeah. I'm quite impressed. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and we've cut off all the stems. Um, Melanie and I are gonna try something new this year. We're gonna try and save the stems uh, for other types of like simple syrups. So we can make a ginger simple syrup. Uh, and then also we're gonna save any of the leaves that don't have damage um, to dry out and make a ginger tea. So we're going to try and actually use the whole plant this year. Mm -hmm. Or find people who want to. Or, yeah, or, or find other individuals or businesses. Putting a bunch of work on. <laughs> Melanie's like, we're doing what? <laughs> we're going to try and use the whole ginger plant, leaves, stems, and roots. Roots for elderberry syrup, simple syrup, teas. And if they don't want to use that, they just want it for the ginger compost. Compost, yeah. yeah. Now, could you even take these two, like, if to mulch like in a bed like you would for oh, leaves. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, and too like a lot of like yeah. things that are super aromatic to humans, like yeah. all the herbs, mm -hmm. hot mm -hmm. peppers, like anything that we think think of like flavor, usually like plants have developed those characteristics to help uh, ward off uh, pests and disease. Okay. So cool. I've, I, I don't know if ginger leaves help repel pests, yeah. but anything that's aromatic, I tend to think that it does. Okay. And so I have sprinkled these yeah. just kind of in the walk paths to break down throughout the winter. Yeah, that's good to know. So compost it, throw it on your beds, just kind of see as an experiment. That would probably be pretty cool. 
Now we're gonna move into harvesting all of this. That'll be a time lapse. You guys can get to see how much, and then we'll get to weigh it and say how I'm much all this so yields excited. it. That'll yeah. be real excited. Yeah. All right, so Sean had mentioned earlier he had never seen a ginger plant actually go to flower. And as we've been sitting here cutting all these off, he has found several. Uh, so we're gonna show you guys what that looks like because it's really cool. Do you know what, like, what it looks like after? Oh, you'd have to like insert a, a photo. Yeah. They're like, they're otherworldly. They're otherworldly. Yeah. Let me see if I can get so that. So they'll get like the size of your hand, like the size of your fist. Yeah. And they got all these weird little I don't know, they like hold a lot of moisture and there's even a, a thing called shampoo ginger and you can squeeze the flower and all this liquid comes out of it that looks like the consistency of shampoo and you can wash your hair with it. That's crazy. And it soaps up and it smells like ginger. ginger. Okay, so I'm gonna find a photo and I'm gonna show it to you guys because I wanna see that. But how cool is that? Also, Melanie found this mother ginger, which was pretty cool. That's what we're calling it, I guess, the mother. mother and the mother. <laughs> she found the mother ginger. Um, okay, so look, right here is the main mother of the plant, and then she produced all of that. Isn't that so cool? So we started the processing. Melanie is taking off a lot of these bigger roots that come out of the bottom of the rhizome. So she's breaking all those off and then breaking the hands into smaller sections. So this will allow us to actually get in there and like scrub in between all the little fingers on the hand. And anything that, that's bad or potentially rotten or the old rhizomes that we're not gonna use again. So like what we had actually planted, out of this whole piece, it's only this rhizome right here that we started with. And so we can feed this to the pigs and we'll have some Hawaiian flavored pork. <laughs> Uh, for Nathan and Jill. Uh, so Mel's just gonna keep processing all these guys, washing them, breaking them into smaller sections, and then we'll do a final uh, scrub. scrub and a, a final weight and see what our yield was on our 24 feet of ginger. So Melanie's processing all the ginger. Uh, right now we're getting it all cleaned up. Uh, some of the questions that Nathan got and Jill got on the other YouTube videos uh, about ginger, they wanted me to answer. And so I think we've hit a lot of them in the video already, uh, but some of the ones I hadn't answered yet was when to harvest, and ginger cannot handle a frost. Um, so, and really it doesn't even like cold nights. So Jill and Nathan have been lowering the tunnel sides uh, on, the e on the evenings it's gotten down into the low 40s, um, but we have our first uh, freeze coming this Friday, so we definitely had to get the ginger out. And uh, it's sized up, like I said, it's the first time I've seen it actually get old enough to go to flower. This has been in here for five months, uh, we could have harvested it after three months. We just get less ginger. And so um, I think that was one of the main questions, just when to harvest before the freeze. Uh, depends on your area, how long your actual season is for growing ginger. And then as far as fertilization, I think a few questions had come with uh, just people who have already planted ginger, but it's just kind of struggling. Uh, ginger is a super heavy feeder. It's gonna want a lot of nitrogen, um, a lot of nutrients, some rich soil. Uh, think about um, Southeast Asia, uh, volcanic soils, black soils with a lot of sand and, and loose structure, uh, which is actually pretty <laughs> close to what is in these raised beds, which is mostly sand and compost. Um, so this soil in these raised beds wound up being perfect for the ginger. 
So just be thinking about that. If your ginger has struggled this year, it's too late now, but <laughs> unfortunately, but next year, uh, just really get some good nutrients, some good drainage. Uh, if you are growing in a pot, uh, you know, using something like uh, rice holes or perlite, that's gonna help increase airflow and uh, drainage and, and get all the extra water out of the container is gonna be really helpful. So Mel, ginger for elderberry syrup. <laughs> we were buying store-bought, mm -hmm. organic store-bought, and you're having to peel it because mm -hmm. we were concerned about the taste, it being bitter. Yeah, I was concerned about the skin adding bitterness to the syrup. So initially when we were doing uh, ginger, we were using store-bought ginger. Mm -hmm. We found that it was bitter because of the skin. Or at least I was assuming that that would be the case, or I was concerned about that. Concerned enough to where I was peeling all, all the, the ginger. ginger. <laughs> Um, we also wanted a really clean product too, and like mm -hmm. we, were, we were using organic ginger, mm -hmm. um, but for a lot of like rhizomes and roots, the, the skins can be a place that accumulates things. Mm -hmm. um, and also what we found is the, the baby ginger, which is what you call this, mm -hmm. baby ginger is not a variety. It's what we're calling these hands of ginger that haven't gone through that process into their second year of life where they've started to put on that thick brown skin. Mm -hmm. So it's baby because it's young, not because, or it's young ginger, not because it's small in size or anything. Mm -hmm. But what we found is that the baby ginger is just, it's sweeter. It's... Yeah, I don't taste, it still has that spice and that bite to it, but the store-bought ginger, that's like the first, that's the first taste that hits your mouth versus the baby ginger, that's kind of a back-end taste and I'm tasting more of the sweet, almost like a, a floral, floral almost. Taste. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the, the, flace, the flavor is, I'd say, a lot better. Oh yeah, significantly better. Significantly better. And so that's why it's really in so, de in so much demand for, um, like in the culinary scene, uh, farmer's markets, this is a really hot item. To have young ginger, chefs want it because you can slice it really thin. Uh, it's really uh, delicious and sweet and just really brightens up a meal. And so I've seen for as much as like 16 to $24 a pound at a farmer's market for this young ginger. I don't know how many pounds we have, but we'll figure out soon inside. <laughs> All right, so here is what one plant is producing that much ginger. Uh, you can see right here, this is the, the kind of the hole in the middle of it. Here's the original cutting. Got that from Kroger. Put it on top of some soil, some moist soil, and let it uh, root for about a month, and then planted it, and five months later, got this. So I'm really excited to see how much this actually winds up weighing. So we're gonna go measure it and uh, get a total for all of the ginger. So we are at Sean and Melanie's house. Yesterday we were at our house. We had harvested the ginger. Melanie and Sean had washed it off. Now we're in her kitchen and she is about to process it. And we're gonna show you guys what that looks like. But out of a 24 foot bed, it yielded 92 pounds of ginger. So crazy. So crazy. And there were like clusters that were over five pounds. That is so insane. So before we dive into like the processing and what she does, uh, this is their final product of elderberry syrup. And we have a really fun announcement at the end of this video. So make sure you watch it till the end. But can you tell them just some health benefits and why you should be taking elderberry syrup? Yeah. Um, so we do elderberry syrup just like when I was a new mom, I kind of heard the buzz about elderberry. Yeah. So um, I have a nutrition background, so I'm naturally kind of intrigued in this stuff, this stuff anyway. And so I researched about elderberry and like, what's the deal with it? And was very impressed with, it's not just one of those like, oh, this is a folk remedy, which which those are great and valid, but it's, it's that and there's tons of research to back it up as to why mm. it kind of gained, gained this traction in herbal medicine. 
Um, so elderberries, for one, are super high in vitamin C, like higher than um, oranges, higher than a lot of the fruits that you tend to think of when you think about vitamin C. Um, they're really high in antioxidants, higher, again, than like blueberries or blackberries, like all those berries that you mm -hmm. think of as being really great sources of that. And then kind of the main thing, the main thing that gives them kind of that um, recognition as an immune booster is this compound that actually it does multiple things but the biggest thing and most impressive thing um, to me is that it inhibits viral replication so oh. say you get sick like you're actively ill and you're taking an elderberry product it's actually going to stop the virus replicating or slow down that replication process and that's you know that's that's um the replicating process of viruses is what's making you feel mm -hmm. so sick yeah um so that was kind of like you know kind of sealed the deal for me like okay this is like yeah. really valid and i could see it being worth my time to make it um it what this was back like seven years ago so it wasn't super popular mm -hmm. like I don't know like maybe I could have bought it at Whole Foods um but I just started making it there were plenty of recipes online yeah um yeah and so and the I, really nice thing too is unlike a lot of other herbal tinctures and remedies this actually tastes good yeah so I've made a lot of tinctures in the past and I just as soon stay sick than have to <laughs> right so, yeah so it's different than a tincture because yeah. you're not we're not soaking it in alcohol or mm -hmm. glycerin um, it's a syrup in that we're boiling down or simmering down elderberries. You know, you do have to cook elderberries for a certain length of time to deactivate. There's a cyanide-like compound in elderberries, but heat deactivates it. Um, so we simmer it down, and then we use ginger, cinnamon, and cloves, which are all, for one, great tasting, but then kind of all have this synergy together yeah. of like being immune boosting herbs, um, and then taste great together with yeah. elderberry and then we sweeten it with our honey so yeah from yeah. their bees so that's cool so the elderberries are local to arkansas um y'all buy them from a farm in arkansas yeah the honey is from y'all's bees so that's really cool too is everything in this bottle is local to us which is really cool well the main things being yeah. the elderberries and the honey and the ginger the cinnamon and clove nobody grows that around yeah. here so <laughs> we do have to source that um but we do always source organic so okay all right, Melanie, so can you tell me and our audience why you are choosing to process the ginger this way? Is this how you're supposed to process ginger? Are there other ways to process it? Yeah, so if you remember, we harvested the ginger young. So because we harvested it early or you know younger than ginger is typically harvested, it doesn't have that thick skin. Um, so without the thick skin, it's not going to have as long of a, a storage life. So I think maybe, I think Sean was telling me like three weeks max that this would keep in the fridge. Oh. So we've got a ton, so obviously we're not going to use, what did we have of these, like four of these in three weeks. Um, you know, and we're going to need it for the duration of the year of elderberry syrup. So we're going to freeze it. Um, so yeah, if you had a ton of ginger, then freezing is definitely the way to go. Um, or, you know, if you couldn't get to using it right away, then yeah, you would definitely want to freeze. So we wash it after we harvested it, but that just knocks off the big clumps. I'm having to go through and like, like I'll go in and break off each little knob and like get all the dirt out. Um, so I've done that or I've started to do that and then I'm running it through my food processor with, um, I've got this, here I can just show you. Um, this is just an attachment um, blade. I don't know if you can see that right here, but that's creating these really thin slices. So um, once we process all of that, we're just gonna freeze it. And then what's nice about that is we can just kind of pull out clumps as we need to. Um, like if I were just using it for just my own culinary use, that's how I would use it. Just pull out, you know, the clumps that I need. Um, but we actually portion this out into like the batch sizes we need, like for each batch of elderberry syrup. But yeah, it's a great way. Um, the other option is to just, after you do all the washing, just leave it whole and freeze it that way. And then when you're ready to use it, you would just grate it on like a fine grater. All right, you guys, so now we have harvested the ginger. We have washed the ginger. Melanie's processing the ginger. And then over the next two weeks, she's gonna be making elderberry syrup for something really special. So they only sell their elderberry syrup locally. 
uh, to different farm stands and just other grocery stores in our area, but they do not sell their elderberry syrup online. And so when we started growing this ginger, um, we kind of had this idea that we could do this small batch pre-order to where they could sell their elderberry syrup online to our viewers with ginger that I helped grow on our farm, which is really kind of cool because you guys know we have collaborated uh, with them and their family on so many different things, our flowers, and now this elderberry syrup is really cool. Uh, so we are super excited to be offering that. There will be a link down below. It's gonna be a two week pre-order. That way Melanie will have enough time to make the ginger. Uh, so just know when you do purchase it, it'll be two weeks before it gets shipped out. All right, you guys, I know this was a long video. We showed you guys a lot, but this has been really cool. I have never grown ginger before and I can tell you I will probably now always grow ginger. Hopefully I'll have, hopefully it'll do as well as this year. Yeah. <laughs> I think so. Yeah. I would hate to like grow it again and I be think super. Set, set a good yeah. Plan. We have yeah. set the standard high. Uh, but thank you guys so much for hanging out with us today and we'll talk to you soon.